Hello and welcome to the State of District 88. I'm Dr. Scott Helton, Superintendent of District 88, and I thank you for joining us today. This ongoing segment features the news and successes of District 88, which is comprised of Addison Trail and Willowbrook High Schools. We look forward to sharing with you the great accomplishments of your hometown high schools through this program. Today we're excited to discuss our updated strategic plan, which was approved by the District 88 Board of Education on February 25th after the recommendation of the administration. We recently updated our strategic plan to retool and enhance our strategic plan, which was formed in 2010, to ensure our focus remains on accomplishing the district's mission of working for continuous improvement of student achievement. From September to November, we met with more than 700 stakeholders, including staff members, parents and guardians, community members, and the students, to gather their feedback and their thoughts. With me today, is Jeff Cohn from Brave Dialogue, who helped facilitate those meetings, as well as Willowbrook Principal Dr. Dan Kraus and Addison Trail Principal Mr. Michael Bolden. Um, you know, if you're watching this uh, segment, you know who Mr. Bolden and Dr. Kraus are, but I, I need to introduce Jeff Cohn formally. Uh, Mr. Jeff Cohn has been working with our school board from everything from governance team training to board self-evaluations to governance team mid-year evaluations of the superintendent. And this year we engaged Mr. Cohn in, in the process of strategic planning. Now, just so you know his background, Mr. Cohn has a BA in economics and sociology from Northwestern University, an MBA from the University of Michigan. He's a former district sales manager at Procter & Gamble, district sales manager for Pepsi-Cola. He started American Telecom Co Corporation, served as the director of field services for the Illinois Association of School Boards, and he's a certified Covey trainer. He has also completed over 1,500 hours of workshops and training sessions with boards of education on team building, goal setting, and governance training over the last 10 years. Uh, it was very interesting to watch Mr. Cohn take our board and our community through this strategic planning process. And just to cover what our timeline looked like in, in, in the process, I'd like uh, Mr. Cohn to just share a few thoughts and words. So, Mr. Cohn. Thank you, Dr. Hilton. It's a great pleasure to be here with everyone. Uh, it was a great pleasure to work uh, with you along with the uh, board, the entire board. It was a great process. Uh, we started uh, almost a year ago now in terms of the work that we started with the board in February of 2018, uh, where the board uh, what did its good work in terms of doing its annual uh, evaluation of itself and evaluation building a board superintendent relationship. And out of that meeting, uh, they actually directed you to say that it's time to uh, renew the strategic plan. Um, and out of that direction uh, came a, a charge to you to create the means on how the community was actually going through, going to go through that process. And also the board did also establish in that meeting that they did not want to uh, just completely discharge all of its end statements. They wanted to keep their mission statement and some key elements in the frame of the actual vision statements that we actually uh, went through the process, like you said, of talking to over 700 of your stakeholders. So the board said Doc, to you, keep the mission, uh, keep the frame, and let's have uh, our stakeholders have an opportunity to engage and actually make comments and go through a process, the SWOT process that we went through uh, to make some uh, recommendations for the modifications that they wanted to make. And so uh, as a result of that, um, with several meetings that we've had uh, with the district, um, they came, arrived at uh, a new vision statement. Uh, which also includes a new element of the Graduate 2 statement, which I would encourage all of your stakeholders to really, uh, if they get an opportunity, to uh, learn and read each of those statements. Because the students, what was very unique about this process, even though we engaged many of the stakeholders, we had over 200 students mm -hmm. that we had the great opportunity of talking to at both of the high schools. Um, and the students had some very interesting things to say about their learning environment, things that they like, 
I mean, a lot in some of the things that they really chimed in and spoke very honestly and said, look, we can do better in this area as well. And so uh, they, I think that they really had a great time and participate in this process. And that was very unique out of uh, most of the districts that I work with. Um, I have never spoken to over 200 students in the uh, going through a strategic planning process. And so that was really um, exciting uh, to, for students to be involved and also ex exciting for their input and uh, the outcome of their input was also exciting. Mm -hmm. So I just really appreciate it. So I look forward to uh, the other questions that you may have uh, yeah. of me doing it. Well, for the people at home, you want to maybe take us through the journey. We started this journey in August. Right. You want to kind of talk about some of the timelines associated with our strategic planning sure, journey? Sure, absolutely. So we started August. You met with the board August 27th. Um, and, and presented a timeline to the board and a general frame and structure as the board, as the board had asked you to do in June at mm -hmm. the meeting that we had with them in June of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and the board said, yes, you know, let's go forward. And um, they agreed with the time, the dates that you had constructed at that time, which was starting the process in September uh, and meeting with uh, internal stakeholders and then also um, meeting with the external stakeholders as well uh, th th during the month of September through October. Mm -hmm. We had uh, two external uh, focus group meetings at both, at both of the high schools, uh, one at each, and uh, we had those meetings, um, I wanna say that they were October 20th and October 27th, both on Saturdays, mm -hmm. uh, which we had uh, several stakeholders uh, to participate in that process as well. And then from there, um, we went through the process of actually editing uh, the mm -hmm. document. But one of the key things is, is that we did add uh, two sessions with the students at both of the schools. So we met with the students um, on, um, on, I believe, on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Um, and we uh, met with over 200 students during that process as well, which was very exciting to hear from the students. And from there, we uh, met with the board from the, through November through January. They actually, the, uh, the administration actually revised the actual statements. And then the, uh, the board went through uh, two readings, uh, one through in January, the month of January for the first reading of the statements and had an opportunity to chime in and say what they liked and what they did not like and make recommendations to the administration for some changes. And then in February, uh, they also came and, and actually came and approved it and, and adopted it in the second read in January, yeah. in February, excuse me. Yeah. So on February 25th, our board adopted our strategic plan on the second reading. And uh, you know, a couple of things happened along the way and I'd like to talk about first uh, with Mike, the uh, internal stakeholder meeting that you hosted at Addison Trail and then we'll go to Dr. Cross because I, I want Dan to capture some of the things that happened with the student sessions over at Willowbrook I think were unique and I, I've never heard of anything like this. So Mike, you wanna talk about the internal stakeholder meeting, who we invited and what right. happened at Addison Trail. So yeah, we uh, hosted at Addison Trail an internal stakeholder meeting which uh, really uh, reached out to many of our parents and community members who are really involved in our school. So we invited uh, parents that are part of our TPO or WPO at Willowbrook, our athletic booster parents from both schools, our music boosters, um, our theater boosters, um, as well as our CAC, our Citizen Advisory Council members. And uh, these parents are actively involved in a lot of the aspects of our school, attending meetings, volunteering, so they are really entrenched um, why we consider those some internal stakeholders. Um, and it was a great, we had an opportunity to meet in groups, so we arranged the tables uh, that night in our student commons um, to meet by similar groups, music, theater, mm -hmm. CAC, um, and we prompted them with uh, things uh, about our school that we're doing well and areas that we can improve on in, in each of the uh, areas of our current or existing uh, strategic plan. Uh, and the dialogue and conversations at the table were so enriching and so powerful. And, and the overall atmosphere, and, and after we were done, just speaking with the parents, the opportunity that they had to give their voice back to their school, uh, they felt empowered to be a part of this process um, to, and that their input was valued and was gonna be used to help us continue to grow as a district and a school. So it was a, a great evening and a great opportunity to get all their input. 
Uh, Dr. Krauss, you want to speak a little bit about the session we had? Now, we did a session at Addison Trail and then one at Willowbrook for the students, and uh, there was some amazing things that happened at Willowbrook. You want to share with so us? So, you know, the students I, I know in both buildings uh, were a collection of many student leader groups that, that we've worked with, whether it be through our YES program, through the student forum that we had last spring uh, focused on school safety. So out of that um, emerged an opportunity for students to not only participate in the process and learn about it, um, but they did feel empowered. So about halfway through through, they actually asked uh, Mr. Cohn and Dr. Helton if, if they could step in and start to facilitate the remainder of the day. And what they found was that they were uh, truly um, living the vision and the mission, if you will. Um, this strategic plan came to life right there in front of us because right. it was exactly what we'd hoped for with all of our learners. Um, and I just thank you guys for that because um, it, it solidified for our students that, that we walk our talk, that we provide them these types of opportunities. Sure. It's not just something that's on paper. As they were providing feedback, Feedback. Um, they went beyond um, just saying yes we like this and we don't like this um, they wanted to be sure that they heard from their students uh, and their classmates so uh, by the end of the day they were actually going into the lunchroom in the cafeteria and just recruiting random students to come and participate right. um, so you saw the entire process transition into a, a truly student-led and student-owned opportunity to give us some really rich and authentic feedback that I know we shared between the buildings and 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 the work moving forward they still talk about it today um, because of that work so um, so you helped the springboard <laughs> Uh, to other avenues and right, activities right. that we're going to uh, share between the two buildings and, and upcoming work that we're going to do with Dr. Helton. Now, Jeff mentioned the fact that we didn't throw the baby out with the mm -hmm. bath water. We kept the basis of what the board adopted in 2010. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because in 2010, our board was about seven years ahead of the curve mm -hmm. with the Every Student Succeeds Act. And right. you guys want to share a little bit about mm -hmm. how close we were to that and our original plans? It, w it was really amazing to go back and look at the document from 2010 and then look at where we're at right now with ESSA and, and those um, goals that we had were right in line with what we were doing, showing us that, you know, we were you know, as much as we want to pat ourselves on the back, we're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Mm -hmm. And we really was all about student success to the point, um, you know, with ESSA now, graduation is a, a huge component Absolutely. of of ESSA. And, and that mm -hmm. was our focus uh, back in, in 2010 that the, the, the board adopted, you know, everything from mm -hmm. um, our students graduating to our, our discipline uh, referrals and you know which lines up with our chronic attendance uh, you making sure that mm -hmm. students are are on track and successful from mm -hmm. uh, current ESSA freshman on track to monitoring our grades that our students are are, are getting A's B's and C's so um, to really line those up really told us that hey mm -hmm. we were on the right track um, and so but so soliciting that input from all of those stakeholders mm -hmm. um, to make sure we weren't still missing anything right really told us that we wanted to continue to go down that path and continue to measure those those ESSA, uh, ESSA um, accountability measures mm -hmm. as well as our own measures. I think because you know now we understand throughout the state schools are, are are expected to be looking at more than just test scores more than just specific data but to look at the whole student and, and mm -hmm. the whole culture and and in 2010 that was an emphasis for us right. and, mm -hmm. and and really a work in progress since that point so any programs we've developed or any other interventions and supports we've created both for students for staff for the community have been focused in that area and now to see it come to life mm -hmm. in a way that the rest of the state is expected to be operating mm -hmm. uh, like Mike Mike you know, you know, Mr. Bolden said it's really um, it is complimentary but at the same time really validated for us the work that that we're moving forward with um, because when you talk about the strategic planning process and, and the document itself uh, it is multifaceted multi-dimensional it right. has a, a, a collection of ways that we can uh, really demonstrate the great work of our students our staff and our community that many districts don't look at right and one of the things that was key, I think, in terms of uh, where you guys were in 2010 is also the great work that the board did. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, dismiss that in terms of looking mm -hmm. at where you were and where you, the board is always pointing to where they want to be. Absolutely. And so they approved the actual uh, strategic elements of the 2010 plan. And you all have been on a charge of moving this district forward mm -hmm. and accomplishing those elements mm -hmm. that were in that plan and, and really landed the district in 2018-19 in and where you are from a success standpoint, much based on what the board spoke in the direction that they get, gave to the administration during that time. Mm -hmm. So I really take my hat off to the board uh, in, a, in a really mm -hmm. uh, great manner because of the fact that boards know what they want, right? They, mm -hmm. they give direction, they state what they want, 
give the latitude, give the resources to accomplish it. And that's what your board did. They did it in 2010, and it came back in, in, um, in 2018 and said, we're not going to just completely dismantle this. We're gonna keep some of the, the frame that mm -hmm. made us successful, and let's give our stakeholders an opportunity to recreate the future, and that's what they did. And that's what I really appreciate about uh, the current board and, and a leadership and working with, in a collaborative way with the superintendent and the administration mm -hmm. Uh, to set the charge going forward so and, and I would encourage the public to go to our website and take a look at our strategic plan and I, I think there's some significant pieces one of the one of the things I think about early on was the uh, the in the vision statement uh, one of the statements is to you know district 88 uh, DuPage High School District 88 is uh, one of our our vision is to prepare students to be college career and culturally ready through 2040 and beyond. And if you think about it, and the reason they talked about 2040 through the community groups was uh, really the kids who are being born now, those kids are who we should be planning for. And, and you know, they should be college ready, but they need to be career ready. We're the fourth largest industrial park in the state. We need to be working with our local colleges and our local employers so that our students are career ready. And right. what does career ready look like? And then as far as culturally ready, culturally ready uh, our students should be able to adapt to any environment Mm -hmm. and be able to work with everybody in an ethically appropriate manner. And it's interesting, our, uh, our vision statement then goes on into categories and we talk about what schools should look like, what classrooms should look like, what learning programs should look like, mm -hmm. what our learners should look like or who they should look like, who, teachers and professionals, what their characteristics should be like, school community partnerships, capturing that. And, and with your leadership, you brought in the work of Dr. Tony Wagner out of Harvard. Mm -hmm. You brought in the work of NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and created something we didn't have is what our graduates should look like. And I thought that was pretty, pretty strong and, and unique work mm -hmm. in our environment. We know a lot of our colleagues now, a lot of the you know, districts out there are looking at what graduates should look like. Your thoughts on, on that process? Yeah, that process was, I thought, was very very important part a new element of actually crafting the future of where what you want to look like in in graduates from in in the future and the students participating and the parents and the stakeholders that you had at the table they really took that very serious mm -hmm. because what they thought about in that process is what do they want a graduate in the future to look like so when you go to the future and you craft what a graduate should look like and frame that graduate in terms of what are those characteristics, what are the 21st century characteristics that we want to have. The administration now has a responsibility and the board had, in adopting this has said this is what we want our curriculums to look like, this is what we want our activities to look like, this is what we want our partnerships, this is what we want our engagement to look like and in order to get students uh, to the future. And I would say that in the graduates who exercise, the students took that very serious. Mm -hmm. Uh, they really, really, uh, from the freshmen understood the significance of it, as well as the seniors. The seniors said, you know what, let me analyze what I really like about what I got out of the district in terms of my educational experience. And the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors said, well, let me, let me have an impact on what I'm mm -hmm. going to get in the future. And so they understood that and took that exercise extremely serious in the, in the statements that they crafted as part of the exercise. So that was really unique. It was fun. And it was really fun to watch the students go through that in both of your uh, schools uh, going through that uh, exercise, the graduates who and creating those graduates who statements. So. so if you're looking online at our documents, you'll see the mission, and then you'll see the vision followed by vision statements. After those vision statements, you'll see another document talking about our goals supporting the District 88 vision. Now those goals, uh, it's the administration's responsibility with those goals to develop action plans to meet those goals. And then after that, you'll see a list of success indicators supporting the District 88 vision. Those are the outcomes. Those are the expectations by the Board of Education, the deliverables out of the strategic plan. So there's an expectation, whether it's my mid-year and end-of-the-year uh, evaluations with the board, mm -hmm. that we're meeting these goals and objectives and successfully completing these indicators to then the building principals, their evaluations, and part of their 
growth is meeting this in their assistance. So down the line, we have accountability mm -hmm. to, to meet the goals and indicators which connect to the strategic plan. Uh, just thoughts on that, Mike? I, I think the fact that it's right there in front of you and you know what mm -hmm. you're striving for gives us purpose in the work that we do each and every day, no mm -hmm. matter what that work is. It always comes back to mm -hmm. these areas of growth and mm -hmm. what we're striving for to provide our students in this community is the best education uh, that we possibly can give them. And when we know what those goals are and they're very mm -hmm. clear, concise, and all mm -hmm. stakeholders had an opportunity to provide input, I, I think that makes our job easier each and every day so we know how to make those decisions mm -hmm. and what we should be working on mm -hmm. um, each and every day that we come to school. I think the, the as Ms. Bolden said, having the four goals be as focused they are um, on you know, student performance, being sure that we're continuously improving that, mm -hmm. uh, having learning programs that are comprehensive, um, time and resources for professionals to grow and develop, and the last one that talks about creating an inclusive school community partnership sure. and environment um, really keeps us um, focus on our work every day um, because there isn't an aspect of what we do on a daily basis within the schools within the district that doesn't touch all four of those at the same time um, so I think it's it's really beneficial to have that clear of goals and then the outcome indicators are, 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 are linked directly to what we were, had talked about previously right. not only ESSA but where we had set ourselves as a standard as a district yes. with the with the board in 2010 and how how that we can retain that focus it's not as though we're changing direction or we have to change all of our outcomes and, and how our measurements uh, in fact we added a few because we we decided there were other indicators we thought sure. were going to be important for our students to yes. identify as college career and culturally ready yep and, and, and one of the other things that when people look at this plan online and you know they have to keep in mind that mm -hmm. you know this is not the plan in terms of its totality uh, there is a lot in terms of strategies and objectives and the timeline and schedule so this is a very high level view of the actual plan um, and that there's a lot that goes into it but I do give your board also in the administration uh, kudos for your goal number one of closing the achievement gap as mm -hmm. well. I mean, the board did adopt and approve these goals as well as part of the strategic plan, and that's a critical element. And so that's something that I take my hat off to educational communities that recognize that that's something that's mm -hmm. significant, mm -hmm. and they put it in the goal language, and now the entire system is held accountable for that to make sure that everyone learns at a high level and, and, and achieves at a high level. And, and so I like to take my hat off to you guys for uh, making sure that that's highlighted and then you go. And I'd like to even point out too that what goes on on a monthly basis within the buildings through our leadership teams is they've actually worked with a third party to create uh, a system that they measure all these indicators in mm -hmm. real time. Mm -hmm. So monthly they're looking at mm -hmm. how are we doing with freshman on track mm -hmm. to graduate. Where are we at with student success as far as measuring failure and, and continuously putting students into intervention programs. And I, I think it goes back to where our board is and was as far as keeping the educational mission to work for the in continuous improvement of student achievement. That's not certain students, that's every student mm -hmm. that walks through our doors. And I need to recognize that because these principals every day, every month, that's their number one priority. And you wanna mm -hmm. talk about that? Yeah, the, that, the opportunity to have all that data in one location mm -hmm. really allows us to have more time to analyze the data, uh, allows us to problem solve instead of spending time gathering it. To have that real-time data right there really uh, you know, makes it, uh, I, I think, what every principal would love to have at their fingertips. So that opportunity there for us to see and to drill down, not just to see mm -hmm. an overall mm -hmm. piece of data, right. but to drill down right. to specific groups so we can look at those gaps as you spoke mm -hmm. about, so that we can close those gaps and look at all the way down to individual students mm -hmm. so we can address an individual student mm -hmm. and their lack of success and what we can better do to provide services to make them successful. Because every student that comes to us each and every day their goal is to be successful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some things get in the way that we need to address, and this helps us to drill down so we can find those students, close the gap, and meet their needs. 
Uh, we have a saying when we look at, at the data is that behind those numbers are the actual kids. Hmm. They're the actual students that are working and accomplishing the goals and, and, and doing the work in the classrooms along with our staff, along with our community and the partnerships that we've developed. So while the data uh, tells one component of the story, it's digging into it, like you said, all the way down to the student level. And then I think that's where you got, we got a chance to see the students' ownership of this is because we do look at that on a personal level with students so that they do feel empowered when they're asked for their opinion. Sure. in their voice because they know that that's how we approach our work um, and it's not just simply um, you know either on a on an average level or or, or just groups of students mm -hmm. we're looking at who are the specific names of students uh, that we need to speak with today to help change their trajectory down the road absolutely yeah and so it was really exciting um, to see the entire system engage in this mm -hmm. and connecting because when you when the public or your stakeholders do read the, the goals and if they read the actual statements inside of the actual uh, strategic plan, your mission, your vision, and all of the different uh, areas of the vision statement, they will see the connectivity mm -hmm. in the alignment. So these things are not arbitrary, they're not, they're not disconnected, they are very much connected and integrated in a very holistic manner. And in talking to your students at both of your buildings, you get a sense the students are aware mm -hmm. that, that what you all do on a daily basis in terms of your leadership at the building level and the district, that they know that they're important. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I did. They were just excited about mm -hmm. being part of, mm -hmm. of their uh, respective schools. And you can get a sense of that, of, of that, the importance that they felt by making sure that the administrators, the leadership is focused on things that's connected to their learning. And that's one of the things that I, I tell you that I, I'm gonna take away from this, and I've been sharing that in other communities also, that you know we gotta listen to the students and we have to listen to them in a significant manner. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I take my hat off to you all, to your leadership for that as well. Well, Jeff, I, I can't thank you enough on behalf of our community, our board, the administration, for your leadership. Dan and Mike, you know, from your work with, mm -hmm. within the building to the work with our internal stakeholders, mm -hmm. the external stakeholders, and, and then delivering the goals and, and the indicators. I appreciate your leadership. And to all of our stakeholders who participated, whether you're a, a student, whether you're a staff member, a community member, a community member who's an internal leader, um, our, our administration, the Board of Education, Jeff, thank you for your leadership on behalf of District 88. As you can see at District 88, we're always striving to provide a high quality learning environment in which our students can succeed and grow. As part of that focus, we continue to evaluate our strategic plan and we're pleased to share with you the most recent version that was approved on February 25th. Thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in again during our next segment of the State of District 88, which will air right here on ACTV. For more information about the strategic plan, go to www.dupage88.net backslash strategic plan 2018. To, start, to stay up to date with all the great things happening in District 88, visit our website at www.dupage88.net where you can sign up for our electronic newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.